in today's session, uh, we will discuss about uh, corporate income tax. And uh, this is your uh, this is your last topic for your taxation uh, module, right? So before uh, we uh, start today's session, do you have any question regarding previous session or regarding anything? Do you have any questions or we start topic six? I think we should start and we we'll, we ask our questions later. Okay. So let's start with the uh, corporate uh, income tax in Vietnam. Uh, in this uh, topic, you're gonna understand uh, which kinds of uh, entities or enterprises are liable to pay corporate income tax, right, in Vietnam. And of course, corporate income tax is any kinds of tax which is paid by the corporations, right? Uh, but one thing uh, I would like to inform you that uh, since corporate means a business entity, right? Besides corporate, we have some other two business entities as well, which is sole trader and partnerships, right? And same corporation income tax also applicable to sole trader and the partnerships or sole proprietors. For those kind of businesses, corporate income tax also applicable. But of course, um, there are some exemptions, deductions are given uh, for the different kinds of businesses. Uh, in addition, there are different kinds of tax rates also, uh, also, uh, also uh, levied by the uh, Vietnamese governments, right? So, uh, of course, in this session, we start with the introductions. Uh, in introductions, we will, uh, we, will, uh, we will know what is the meaning of corporate and uh, uh, how about the local company and foreign company, if there are any kinds of foreign companies in Vietnam, uh, so how uh, they are subject to pay uh, uh, Vietnamese uh, corporation income tax, right? And in addition, we will also look at uh, the, um, uh, the tax year, right? So when does it start and finish and what is the total period for, 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 for tax year? And we will also, in introductions, we will learn about how about the business, which is the new established business, what will be the tax year for, for those kind of business or any kinds of business which is merged or acquired, merged in any other business or acquired by the other business. So in this situation, what will be the tax year for those kind of businesses, all right? So these are the thing about um, introductions. Then we move on to the main uh, main part of uh, this session, uh, which is tax payable. How do we calculate um, uh, tax payable, corporation tax payable? So we have a proper uh, formats to, to estimate corporate uh, income tax. So let's just start with the uh, turnover, right? So turnover minus deductible expense plus uh, other income, so that's known as uh, assessment income, and then some kinds of um, uh, some kinds of uh, uh, credits we have available if if we are earning any income from the foreign countries, and then then we move on to tax rate, and finally after uh, after applying the tax rate, whatever amounts come, that amounts uh, corporations are liable to pay to uh, governments, right? But in this, uh, in this tax payable, we're gonna learn many things like as our deductibles and non-deductibles uh, income, right? And tax exempt income, right? Which kind of incomes uh, on which you don't have to pay a tax and then uh, tax rates. And finally, uh, uh, finally, uh, credit tables to any kind of income which is earned in foreign countries and bring back to Vietnam. If any, any corporation bring that money back to Vietnam, what will be the, uh, uh, I mean, what, do we have to pay tax on that kind of income or not? So that's thing we will, uh, we will discuss. Right, so let's start with the uh, introductions.
So, um, new fractions, uh, we have, um, what is corporate income tax? So what is corporate income tax? Corporate income tax is the tax which is levied uh, on the income of business organizations. Of course, uh, business organization income may, business organization means profit making organizations, right? Profit making companies. Right? So profit making companies liable to pay corporate income tax if they have a taxable income, right? Next is sole proprietor. Sole proprietors also uh, subject to pay corporate income tax unlike some other countries like as Australia or England, right? So in Vietnam, sole proprietors, uh, own sole, sole proprietors, taxable income, corporate income tax uh, applicable since they're part of business, all right? So it means they, they, they do not categorize as a sole trader and a corporation as a separate. So they comes in the same, uh, same categories. Then, um, Okay, so who pays? So who pays? Who pays uh, corporate income tax? So of course, uh, any kinds of uh, organizations, any kinds of business organizations, they involve, they involve in rendering services and providing products they involve in providing product and services which lead to income right which lead to income so that's kind of businesses are subject to pay corporate income tax so let's say uh, these two type of this business divided into two parts right so it means two kinds of businesses we have what is a Vietnamese companies, Vietnamese business, Vietnamese organizations, right? And another one is a foreign, right? So remember, if any foreign company which is registered under the um, registered under the uh, tax office, these foreign companies are subject to pay corporate income tax, all right? If that kind of foreign companies are not uh, registered, then it's more likely to relate to foreign contractor withholding tax, right? Vietnamese companies, of course, it's Vietnamese company, they must be registered whatever income they are generating in Vietnam, any kinds of income they are generating in Vietnam or out of Vietnam. Vietnamese company, they have some kinds of subsidiaries, they have some branches in foreign countries, like some bank, some like a DRDB bank or some other real estate companies, like as um, I guess it's the I, I don't know I can pronounce name correctly or not, but the, the real estate company called uh, Juan Zelai. Uh, this company last time I've been to um, been to Myanmar and and, and a look uh, that Vietnamese company they are operating in, in Vietnam. Sorry, in Myanmar, uh, Yangon. All right, so that's. Uh, 
kind of companies uh, if they bring money back to Vietnam, uh, they subject to pay Vietnamese corporation tax. Right? Uh, but the thing is that uh, if they already pay tax in foreign country, uh, then what will be happening in that case? This, this, these things uh, we will we will discuss later. But the idea is that any Vietnamese company they are generating income in Vietnam or outside Vietnam, they subject to pay um, subject to pay corporation corporate income tax, right? Foreign income or Vietnamese income. Right. Next, which is a tax assessment period? Tax assessment period. Regarding uh, tax assessment period, any corporations, any company, they can follow uh, Western calendars. Right? Western calendar or any financial year. Any financial year. Any of these, they can pull. As long as the period is 12 months. As long as no matter calendar year or financial year come up with the 12 months, it's okay. Vietnam tax department do not specify the tax year, right? But uh, if, you, if, if you look at the Australia or Canada, uh, sorry, England, uh, they specify the tax years, right? And if, if you are generating your income fall within that period, you are liable to pay corporation tax in, in that country. But in Vietnam, it's quite flexible, no matter the Western calendar or financial year. You can switch from Western calendar to, to financial year. Again, no any issue. But again, as long as it covers, it's, it's, it's equals to the 12 months, that's, that's fine, right? But now, One thing we need to we need to understand that regarding this uh, period, I'm going to give example of two types of business. Right. Let's say first kind of business that's called new establishment. New establishment. So you started a business. So if business is started and when business is started, let's say this business, this business for a financial year. And according to this business, financial year starts in January and finish is December. Right? This is the financial year this new business follows. Let's say this business starts operating or generating income or providing product and services, production and so on. They started business in November. They follow financial year, January and December, right? But it doesn't mean that every business starts in January. Whenever they start business, they are not looking for the calendar. Once they got the license, once they, they have enough resources to start production and generate income, they involve, right? No any business, they look at the financial year. Same like with us, whenever we are looking for a job, we're not looking for the financial year or tax year that we have to pay tax. We just, we get opportunities and we get the job and we start generating income. Exactly, happened here. So, for example, the new business 
uh, started in uh, November, right? So what does it mean? So this business first financial year or tax year contains only two months, right? November and December, right? Two months for this financial year because January next year, it's a new financial year. So the idea is that if any new establishment, if any new business, which tax year is less than three months, less than one quarter, right? Less than three months, then whatever period is that, first period, let's say two months. So these two months will add to next tax year. So means next tax year contain 14 months, all right? So whatever income is generated in this 14 months, company will pay. But it doesn't mean that every time 14 months, because when 14 months finish and start new year, 12 months, 12 months, so on, all right? So keep in your mind, if any kind of new business, which tax year, first tax year, of course, it's a new business, so the first tax year, tax year is less than three months, then that period, that month, let's say two months, I give example, these two months will be added to the following tax year. So the following tax year counts as the 14 months. So in the following tax year, company will pay tax for 14 months income. All right, so that's happened for the new establishment. Uh, another situation, second example is uh, uh, mergers and acquisition. We call it MNAs. So, if any kinds of business is acquired by or merge uh, in any other business, then what will be the tax year for that kind of business? It's same like as that, for example, company A, all right? Company A acquired by company B, all right? So this company A is acquired by company B. So for example, this acquisition occur on, on, in the middle of October. So let's say 15 October. So that acquisition occurred. So what does it mean? It means this A company will pay tax from January to 15th of October, whatever income they have generated, they will pay tax. And this company B, because they acquired this company, so after the acquisition, so for this company, financial year gonna be more than more than 12 months. Same like as this situation here. Same like as here. All right. But the idea is that before acquisition, they will estimate the tax year. Right. Once acquisition has been done, after whatever company is acquired, that company uh, will um, will uh, will um, will add in their tax year. The rest of the month, let's say acquisition happens, so from fifteenth of October to December. So its period is less than three months. So they will pay tax for for just two and a half months. All right, new acquisition business. So and then so on. So it's, it's similar to the new establishment. After acquisition, it's similar to the new new establishments, but before, uh, I mean, but, but uh, before acquisition, this company will pay tax not for 12 months. It will pay tax until this one, right? Not wait for the end. Because once it acquired this, uh, this business, maybe 
the revenue turnovers will be increased. So this is unfair to pay tax for 12 months by this. All right. And this, this, this business will pay tax for 14 months. Because after acquisitions, for not, not, not literally 14 months, uh, it should be 14 and a half. 14 and a half months. Because after this acquisition uh, made on uh, 15th of October. So it means still two and a half months left. All right? Two and a half months left. But if acquisition occur, let's say, on September, in this case, if acquisition occur on September, in this case, B company will pay tax because the year is more than uh, the first after acquisition, the tax year is more than uh, three months. So they will pay tax for this year and next year it starts from January 12th. Okay, you cannot add it, all right? We will add period in the following year at the condition of three months, all right? So three months condition applicable for these two kinds of business. Three months conditions apply to these two types of examples. All right. So this is the ideas uh, behind the, uh, the the basic things about um, corporate income tax. All right. So let's let's move on to the next. Next is second learning outcome. Second learning outcome is a corporation tax payable. So tax payable. So we have a proper um, proper structure to estimate the, uh, uh, the tax. So let's explain, let's start with the first one. So the first is a turnover. Turnover minus deductible expense for the tax year plus other income so that's known as taxable income taxable income minus tax exempt income so you know, uh, tax exempt income, any kinds of income on which uh, on which uh, companies don't have to pay tax. All right, so that's called tax exempt income. Minus any kinds of losses which are carried forward. Any kinds of losses carry forward. Carry forward means uh, previous year we have previous year losses and we uh, we uh, we carry forward to the next year or in the current year we brought down from the previous year, correct? So we have to subtract it from the taxable income after subtracting tax exempt income. So make sure we follow exactly the same order, right? then that's whatever amounts we got in after that, that's called accessible income. Accessible income. Right. Then on this accessible income, 
applicable applicable tax rates will apply applicable tax rates will apply after this after applying applicable tax rates whatever amounts we got it in that amounts we have to subtract creditable So we gonna subtract any kinds of credit tables on the foreign income right? if we already pay taxes. So after subtract this, whatever amounts left, after subtract this, whatever amounts left, that's amount we will pay to government. That's called tax payable. So that amount is known as tax payable. Tax payable. After subtracting credit tables, whatever is left, this money will go to uh, government. So this is the, um, the structure to estimate the tax. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna study all these main points, like let me write down this one. B, C, D. So all these, so B, we have B1 and B2, the deductible and non-deductible. So we will study one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven important components that we must know if you want to estimate taxable income, all right? So let's start with the, uh, with the turnover. So, so turnover means any kinds of income that we generate by providing product and services. Very general idea, right? Any kinds of income that we earn by giving or providing product and services. That's income known as turnover. In simple language, sales, all right? Product and service. Product means any kinds of tangible things that we are selling. It's a mobile company, phone companies, they are selling mobile phones. Right? Uh, so uh, it's, it's quite obvious what kind of business you have because every kinds of business are not involved in providing products they are involved in providing services as well, all right? So let's say uh, brokerage firms. Brokerage firms means any kinds of firms, they help people to invest money in stock markets. Like as in, in Ho Chi Minh City, the famous uh, brokerage firm is uh, SSI. I think it stands for uh, Saigon Security 
industry or something like that. Or SSI, which you can Google later. It's called famous brokerage house. We call it brokerage house, brokerage firm. So, uh, so of course, that's brokerage firms in, involved in providing various services. One of the main services or main source of income that brokerage firm is a brokerage. Commissions, that's they earn it when they help people to buy and sell stocks. People or organizations or any kinds of entities, all right? Same thing with the real estate business, all right? So real estate business, uh, any questions you have? Okay, so uh, brokerage, uh, so next one is a uh, real estate, right? So real estates, uh, what, because real estates, they involve in providing services or selling land and the business. So whatever land and house they sell it, that will be not, will not treat it as a, a, as a capital asset sale. Right, because that's their product. So whatever commissions, profit they generated, they, they're liable to pay uh, tax on it. Like as I mentioned previously that uh, in Vietnam corporations, they do not pay capital gain tax separately. It's Okay, so, um, so it, it depends what kind of services a business is providing to, to make money or what kind of product company is providing to make money. So that's kind of, uh, uh, income uh, will be known as turnover, all right? Uh, but there are some kinds of business, their nature is different. So let's say, let me give you an example, let me give you a practical example. So practical example is a uh, construction companies, all right? or construction companies who takes contract. So let, let's take example of construction company, which is building metro rail in Vietnam, right? That company is building a metro rail in Vietnam. So they, con they take a contract from governments, right? So, of course, if you are taking a contract, which means you are receiving money all at the same time, right? Even though you are not providing all kinds of services. Let's say I am a contractor. I took a contract from government. So government is supplying me money to complete this contract. So you can see that government is supplying me money. So I am generating all the revenue, revenue at once. All right, revenue at once means, and I said government that I will take 10 years to complete this project. All right, so now the question is how can I Determine that how much will be my turnover year by year because I have to pay tax every year. I cannot say that government, I will pay you tax when the 10 year is finished, All right? Or in the first year, I don't want to pay tax on the money which I collect total from the, from the, uh, from the government, right? As an income. So how I gonna, so this is called, uh, construction or contract based uh, construction we call it i think contract construction stuff we call it it's more about accounting but a same same principle apply when we are estimating uh, the the tax right so the question is how we can estimate our turnover year by year right so the revenue will be based upon 
the cost. Revenue will be based upon cost. Now, what does it mean based upon cost? So, for example, the total cost of this 10 year projects is $100 million, right? $100 million is the cost of this 10 year project, which building a metro rail. So let's say in the first tax year, no matter tax year is three months, four months, six months, eight months, right? The first tax year. In this first tax year, my cost is a $10 million. The first tax year cost is 10 million. We can estimate cost because we have material, labor, overheads, operating expense, and so on. Or so we can estimate how much money we spend it the first tax year, the first financial year, and the first period. So on the basis of this first year cost, we will estimate how many percent, how many percent cost occur first year. So you can see that here is a 10% is the cost. 10% is the cost. So we apply same rate to estimate the revenue for first year. So if government is giving me 100 and $50 million government is offering me $150 million to complete project in 10 years. So $150 is my revenue, revenue at once. So the 10%, which is $15 million is my first period or that period turn over. So this example only for construction contract construction based companies where, where you are generating whole money in at the same. So this is the, the, we have another method too, but this is one of the very common and simple methods that we apply in order to estimate oh, oh, common and, and one of the uh, most applied method that all construction company, they, they, they use it to estimate turnover when they are they are uh, filing a tax return so when they are, they are paying a tax to the government, right? So this is the way to estimating the turnover, right? Another thing about uh, turnover, this is the first thing. Second thing, turnover is about VAT. If company is estimating VAT through credit method. Remember, in uh, value added tax, we study two types of method credit method and direct method. And another name of credit method is a deduction method. So here, you will find out that why credit method known as uh, known as a deduction method, all right? So idea is that if any company is applying credit method to pay VAT, all right? To pay v VAT. In this case, that company turnover, that company turnover will be assessed, will be assessed to pay tax without VAT, right? Without VAT or exclude VAT or exclude VAT. Exclude VAT. So it will be excluded from 
turnover, all right? That amount will be excluded from turnover if we are applying credit method to pay VAT. So if it's excluded from turnover, turnover will reduce. And of course, turnover will reduce our taxable income or assessable income or future income that we're gonna estimating to, to find the tax payable will be reduced. Because if turnover reduce, your final income or taxable income will be reduced too. So that's why we also call it deductions method, all right? So it's also giving us some kind of deductions or some kind of benefits at the time of making uh, uh, payments for corporation income, all right? Corporation income tax. So there's two things we have to uh, find out or understand about uh, turnover, all right? So now move on to the next, which is B. B is deductible expense. Deductible expense. So instead of only looking at deductible expense, we are gonna look two types of expenses here. B1 and B2. So B1 is a deductible expense. B1 is deductible expense and B2 will be non-deductible expense. So let's start with the deductible expense. So B1 is about, um, it's deductible. So in deductible expense, we're not gonna only study about deductible, but we also look at the non-deductible in order to uh, minimize any kinds of confusions between deductible and non-deductible. So we have to be very clear which one is known as deductible and which one is known as non-deductible so we can keep them uh, separate. So let's start with the uh, deductible expense. In deductible expense, the first one is a cost of goods sold. So deductible expense, any kinds of expense that we will subtract from turnover, which is good for us because it will reduce the income. So as a result, income reduced, tax reduced. So deductible expense, good. So first, first of all is the cost of goods sold. I hope you know that uh, if you study uh, management accounting or financial accounting. But anyway, if you don't know cost of goods sold uh, here, um, cost of goods sold is any kinds of cost which involve in manufacturing. But here we focus more on material. So we focus more on material, material cost, right? So, but accounting point of view, Cost of goods is any kinds of cost which is involved in production, material labor overheads. But from tax point of view, here we focus on the material cost, right? So whatever material we purchase it to produce product, all right? That material cost will be deductible. But again, make sure you have to keep the invoices. You have to keep the uh, invoices. Right. And one more thing, in VAT, you study that uh, if we are purchasing any kinds of material, we have to pay tax. This is called um, input VAT, right? And you can claim for uh, input VAT, right? Uh, so keep in your mind, if you purchase a material and you are paying input VAT, 
and of course you will claim that VAT back. So if you are claiming that VAT back, then you have to subtract VAT from your invoices when you are estimating your deductible expense. So let me write down here. Um, reduce, so deduct. Deduct VAT refund. Whatever VAT you have refunded from the government, then make sure you subtract it. You cannot add it because if you add it, you're going to have a double benefit. All right? Because if your deductible expense increased, your tax liability reduced. And you already take recover. I mean, you already took refund from, 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 the, from the government. So one benefit, two benefits on one kind of expense. And this is not good. All right? So you can take benefits either one side or the other side. So you cannot take benefits from the both sides. So this is illegal, right? So keep in your mind, if you already got the tax refunds, then you have to deduct from your material cost. That, that's why we, we require our invoices. All right, that's why we need our invoices to accept how much VAT we are paying. And, uh, and, and you also providing uh, evidence that you already get refunds, and then you, you will subtract it, right? So keep in your mind this thing. Second thing is a second thing is a labor cost. Labor cost. Um, labor cost is there any kinds of money that you are paying to your workers who are working involved in kinds of corrections. But not just a production, uh, whoever is working in a company and whatever money you pay to that person, it's known as the labor cost. Whatever money you are paying to your employees, worker, whoever is working in the company. Right? But remember one thing regarding the labor cost. Any kinds of money that you are paying to your worker besides salary, if that money is not mentioned in the contract, that money will not be treated as a deductible labor cost, All right? So deductible labor cost is any kinds of labor cost, which is paid as per employee contract or as per contract that you have signed with employee all right so let's say bonus i mentioned no 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 not not bonus uh let's say lucky money because in vietnam there is a kind of uh kind of there is a tradition to to give lucky money on the lunar new year so let's say if company is paying a lucky money to their employees all right but that lucky money amounts is not described in the contract it's out of contract right they, they didn't mention at all that at the end of the year that particular amount will be given to employee as a lucky money right but if any kind so that money will not part of labor cost of course it will not treat it as a deductible expense it will be treated as a non-deductible expense all right it will be treated as non-deductible expense, so which means we will add or we will not subtract from the turnover. Not add, but we will not subtract from the, from the turnover. So we subtract only the labor cost, which is part of the contract. But, but uh, normally when, when any employee, the sign contract with the employer, everything is mentioned in very detail. It's a very long list of uh, long list of remunerations that a company is providing to their worker. This could be a salary, this could be a, a bonus, incentive, allowances. Allowances could be a meal, could be uniforms, traveling, house, uh, tuition fee for the, 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 uh, the, uh, 
the, 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 uh, the kids, children like this, personal income, and, and I explained about the personal income tax. So exactly, it's a complete list. It's a detailed explanation that what company is is uh, giving to their employee as a remunerations. All right. If any kind of income is not part of the contract, not part of the remunerations, written contract, then it will not treat it as a deductible expense. So it must be paid as per the contract. Next one is the um, depreciation. I hope uh, you know the meaning of depreciation. If you don't know, I explain it quickly. Depreciation uh, means the value of money goes down over the period of time. So it's basically it's paid on the the fixed assets but depreciation also paid on uh, i mean fixed tangible assets but it's also paid on fixed intangible assets we, we don't call it depreciation we call it amortization like in uh, wheels and, and some other kinds of uh, intangible assets all right so so we're, we're going to study a few things about uh, depreciation here first thing depreciation paid or estimated on fixed assets. Fixed assets involve tangible assets and intangible assets. Intangible assets. Tangible assets means any kinds of assets we can see, we can touch like as flat machinery, equipment, furniture, and so on. Or intangible is any kinds of things that we can't see, we can't touch like as a Google, uh, according to uh, Vietnam accounting standard, would be not treated as a as a intangible assets, uh, but according to international accounting standard, is treated as a as a asset. So okay, no goodwill. This could be a trademark. This could be logo. This could be copyrights. This could be a patent. Right. All these are examples of the uh, intangible assets. Right. So if the value goes down of intangible assets over the period, that's called amortization. Right. But if the value goes down of tot, uh, of tangible assets, land, uh, land, uh, sorry, plant, machinery, so on, is is called depreciation. But it comes in the same category. Value goes down over the period of the assets, fixed assets, right? So remember, fixed assets, right? So fixed assets means the life of the asset is minimum one year. If the life of asset is not minimum one year. It will not treat it as a fixed asset. So that's the definitions of the fixed assets. Right. Second thing is uh, before estimating the depreciation um, accounting standard, Vietnam accounting standard, or any, uh, of course, Vietnam accounting standard, because we're talking about Vietnam corporation tax, uh, they specify the definition of uh, assets. Right? Asset is any kinds of. Um, uh, and any kind of uh, we call it uh, unexpired expense that's give us future benefits right it, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's kind of uh, economic benefits inflow of economic benefits some, something like this so define the meaning of the asset so its asset is known as uh, unexpired expense or any kinds of expense any kinds of not 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 generally expense any kind of spending that's going to give us future benefits if if your your spending money comes in this category, it will known as your fixed assets, right? And you you have to pay uh, calculate depreciation and depreciation is a deductible expense. But of course, in relation to depreciation, you have to meet the requirements of this, right? So second thing is our definitions of assets, right? Make sure you know the definition of assets. If, of course, fixed assets, if your fixed asset definition do not comes, uh, I mean, if your assets do not uh, count as, I mean, it's not comes in the, in defining the assets, it will not treat it as the assets, all right? So life is minimum one year, all right? Um, second thing, uh, third thing is a uh, depreciation will be calculated on 
on the gross value of assets. Gross value of assets. So now what does it mean gross value of assets? I think that's more about accounting, but same principles apply here too when we are estimating the depreciation. What does it mean gross value of assets? So let's say uh, I, pur uh, I purchase uh, air conditions, air con or AC. I spend nearly, I don't know, let's say 10 million, 10 million Vietnam dong. All right, I spend 10 million Vietnam dong to purchase as, uh, to purchase a con. And I paid extra 500,000 to fix it. I, I paid 500,000 as a labor cost. In this 500,000, transportations and mechanic comes and he did some construction and fix the aircon in my company, right? So the value of assets, which I need to estimate the depreciation will be 10.5 million Vietnam dollars, not just a 10 million. So the idea is cost of purchase plus other additional expense we occur to make it ready to use. I repeat, cost of purchase, right? The money that we paid to the seller of the assets plus any other expenses I spend to, to, to get it ready to use. So other expense could be labor, transportations, small construction, fixing, and so on, right? Once it's ready to use, whatever money I spend to make it ready to use, that expense or that money known as your gross value. That's the meaning of gross value, all right? Not just the money that we are paying, anything we spend, all right? Next one is a uh, methods. So, calculate depreciation. So what are the methods we have to calculate depreciation? So same, if you study accounting, same methods we have here. So three methods we have to, to estimate the, the, the depreciation. The first one is a straight line method. Straight line method. Second one is a reducing balance method. Reducing balance method. Third one is a output base or production based. So right name is production output. Production output method. So you can apply any of these method to estimate the depreciation and that depreciation will be uh, deductible, any kind of. Do you know these methods? You want me to explain or do you know these methods? Because these are mainly, mainly about, normally about financial accounting. Do you know that? These, uh, these can you explain? Can you explain for me? Can you explain me the last two methods? Okay. Okay. Reducing balance method. So last two. Anyway, I explain all if in case you don't know. Okay. So the first one is a straight line method. Straight line method. Let's say uh, the 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 cost of assets is a ten thousand, and the life is ten years. So every year, $1,000 will be depreciations. So that's called straight line. Every year, same depreciation, straight line, straight, same every year. So we divide equally the life of the assets, right? This is first. Second, second is a reducing balance method. Uh,
reducing balance method, let's say the depreciation rate is at 10%. So second, in second method, so gross value is $10,000. So $10,000, 10% 10 of 10,000 is 1,000. Now the value of assets is 9,000. 10% 10 of 9,000 is 900. That's 8,000. 100 10 percent is 810 so this is the first year depreciation second year depreciation third year depreciation and so on all right so these first year for deductible for first year second year deductible for second year so on right so this is called reducing balance method now third one is a production output method production output method we estimate the depreciation of assets on the behalf of the outputs right so let's say uh let's say machine the total life of this machine is equals to ten thousand products this machine can produce 10,000 product. After producing 10,000 product, this machine value finished, life finish. It can't run anymore, right? So first year, how many product we produce? Let's say we produce 2,000 products out of 10,000. So which means 20%, 20% of gross value. Right, twenty percent of gross value will be two thousand. Two thousand dollar will be depreciation for first year. Right. Second year, how many product it produced? Third year, fourth year, so on. Right, that's the way to estimate uh, depreciation. All right. So remember one thing: uh, if you know how to calculate depreciation, that's good. If you do not know how to calculate depreciation, so keep in your mind when you are estimating the depreciation don't forget to uh, reduce the um, scrap value All right so let's say um, um, this machine can run the cost of machine is uh, seven All right and life is five years and scrap value is two thousand so make sure you minus this two thousand so the precision will be estimated on this five thousand right so something like this so that's, that's very general things we do that when we are estimating the depreciation. Okay. So that's the ideas behind these uh, methods that we can apply to estimate the depreciation and that depreciation will be treated as a deductible expense. Right? So now move on. Next is a, I think I have two. Still, it's B1. So, next is a lease assets. Lease. If we are leasing, then you know that lease, there are two kinds of lease operating lease and finance lease, right? If you treat lease assets, as a operating lease. If it's operating lease, then whatever money you are spending, that's money will be treated as deductible expense. So operating lease. All right, lease asset. If it's operating lease, because in operating lease you are paying every period. Right. So whatever money you paying every period, that will be your deductible expense. So the money you are paying to lease the assets every period, that will be considered as your operating um, in, um, expense. But if this asset is treated as a finance lease or capital lease, then it's up to you. You want to treat as assets or liability. 
if you are recognizing as an assets, then you have to calculate depreciation. And the depreciation will be deductible. Because see, it's like as accounting, exactly like as accounting. In accounting, uh, we have one special uh, special provisions for lease estimation. So if it's capital lease, they have a every there is a way to estimating uh, the lease, and there is a proper accounting treatment for lease. But here, you don't have to go in more detail of uh, accounting treatment of lease. But uh, just keep in your mind operating lease, deductible expense, all right? If is treating, if lease treated as assets, it will be depreciations, all right? And depreciation is again, it's a deductible, all right? Next is a um, operating expense, all right? Operating expense means any kinds of expense that's not part of the production, like as administration cost, right? The administration cost means any kinds of expenses occurred in the office, like there's depreciation of office assets, salary of office employees, right? Or any kinds of printing stationary expenses belongs to office. So that's known as uh, operating expense. So operating expense are deductible. Right, deductible. Right. Next is a dividend or interest. Dividend payments or interest payments. Right, you are paying a dividend. It's deductible. Paying interest, obviously, it's deductible. Right? Uh, one interesting thing about Vietnam is uh, compared to Australia or England or other investment countries' uh, taxation system, there is a special tax when we are paying a dividend to the shareholders. Right? It's taxable. Right? But in Vietnam, dividend payments is is deductible in trust of course also deductible but dividend in vietnam is deductible unlike the tax law of uh, australia or or, or or england right so it's deductible so it's so these are deductible in vietnam But I want to say something about dividend. For example, you spend any money to sell share. and pay dividend if you're spending money any kinds of money to sell stocks that is not deductible right not deductible let's say any kinds of administration cost that we have to pay in order to issue stocks or marketing and advertising to sell stocks that expense is not deductible we spend let's say dividend payments is a uh, ten dollars all right and we spend extra two dollars for us cost is twelve dollar but only ten dollars will be deductible these two dollars are not deductible any kinds of additional money that you spend to give dividend which is 10 or to sell share that's money will will not treat it as a deductible expense right so that's the ideas behind uh, dividend so dividend only ten dollars the actual dividend that we are paying not the 
not the uh, not the additional charges or any other thing that's associated with the with the dividend but only the dividend exact dividend so that's that's all about uh, your uh, deductible expense so three oh sorry b1 is finished which was about deductible expense so let, let's talk about b2 so let's talk about b2 so b2 is about non deductible expense If you are spending on the following things, that will not be treated as a as a deductible. So let's start with the first one. It's a non-business purpose expense. Non-business purpose expense. You spend any kinds of money that do not contribute to maximize your production or revenue, right? Or any that's that's not paid for the business purpose. Their expenses will not be treated as your as your um, deductible expense. Right? You cannot minus on your turnover when you are you are uh, calculating your your taxable income. Right? I mean, yeah, taxable income. Next one is the accruals. Accruals. You know accruals. Have you heard about accruals? Is is again? It's is accounting accounting uh, accounting jargon. Have you heard accrual? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Those are the accruals. So accruals uh, will not be treated as your deducted deductible expense. Right? Next is a uh, fines for administrative offense. Administrative offense. Any kinds of fines that you have paid uh, for administration, like as any kinds of legal fines or any kind of things. For example, take example of the tax payments. You taking too much time to pay the tax, right? And then you have to pay fine. So of course that's fine. It's a business expense because it belongs to the business but that will not be treated as your deductible expense. So one thing let me explain you to clarify here. You know, when we calculate the net profit, accounting, accounting point of view, accounting point of view, we have sales minus cost, all kinds of costs, operating and, co and cost of goods sold. We have net profit before, all right? Minus interest, minus tax minus dividend and then you got net profit after right. that's the way to estimating the profit so remember in this cost this is turnover right so turnover of course uh, providing product and services in this cost tax this is accounting point of view but tax point of view, some are deductible, some are non-deductible. Some are deductible, some are non-deductible. 
profit. When you're calculating your net profit, you are you you you're running more both, right? And then accounting point of view, you pay this tax, right? But taxation point of view, it's it's a different way to estimating tax. So this is the tax you pay, you calculate, and you pay. You means you means company. You means company. Company calculate and pay. And government point of view, turnover minus deductible plus other income, all right, minus exam income, tax rates, minus any creditable or foreign income, then you go tax payable. So see, there is a different way to estimating the tax. And of course, the number that we are paying, that's what we think we are paying to government and then government will calculate like as i explained you turnover minus deductible expense plus other income right and then minus exam income minus any kinds of loss carry forward right then you got accessible income then you calculate tax rates apply tax rates right and then minus any kinds of credit from foreign income and then you got tax payable right so if any kinds of difference in this that's maybe have to pay or maybe refund if let's say here i already paid ten dollars and here is nine dollar and then i got i got tax refunds but here is ten dollar and here is nineteen dollars and then i have to pay nine dollars so this is basically the way that we are company estimate the tax and tax office or tax practitioner estimates the tax. So this is a two different things. So here some are deductible and some are non-deductible, but from here only deductible. Okay, so we move on. Next is uh, any kinds of uh, any kinds of business expense paid by foreign company for Vietnamese company right any expense paid by foreign company for Vietnamese company or any expense paid by Vietnamese company but allocate to foreign company right I am Vietnamese company I'm paying them all right I'm writing expense but that expense be paid by the Vietnamese company that could be cost of company right but that cost will not be treated as a deductible cost or deductible expense that will be non-deductible expense right. uh, next is a credited VAT this one I already explained you remember when I explained you about uh, cost of goods sold in cost of goods sold I mentioned that uh, uh, I mentioned that uh, you already claim you already claim uh, money related to VAT, right? If you already claim, you have to minus, right? If you minus it, your deductible expense will be reduced, and whatever money you minus, that's known as your non-deductible expense because we, it doesn't matter. Right? Same like as in cost of goods sold, material purchase All right so is the same thing that I explained to you before okay next is a uh, 
any kinds of financial aids you receive a financial aids financial grants or aid financial aids except um, um, except natural disaster or any kinds of social economic benefits right if you're spending money on this and uh, you are providing financial aids, right? So if you're providing financial aids to uh, charities, uh, to natural disaster or societies is okay. But for charities, of course, it must be a authorized um, uh, charity uh, or, or non not for profit making company. If it's not authorized, whatever you are donating, your expense will not be treated as a deductible expense. But normally donations is, is a part of uh, deductible. Is but in in Australia or in in England they have a separate way when they are estimating tax. So they, they separate donations and of course it has a limit, right? But for Vietnam, the donations is part of deductibles or donation for all these kind of natural disaster or society related, right? Next one is a. Uh, Uh, any kinds of benefits in kind you are paying some other benefits not in, 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 in form of cash in form of other things but of course it has a monetary value you are giving the benefits in kind to someone uh, who is not part of executive management benefits kind to someone who is not part of executive board members normally company give any kind of benefits kind to uh, to like as uh, car facilities house facilities to their to their uh, to their management or the people are part of the management but if you are giving that kind of benefit of kind to someone else who is not part of management right maybe outsider not not not, not a shareholders or not any other uh, management person right so that will not be treated as your deductible expense right next one is a uh, depreciation on assets which is not used for production or business production or business all right we are estimating depreciation on the assets but that asset is not no longer used in business all right and that assets cannot be used to uh, use in company operating activity that will not be treated as a deductible expense next one is a uh, any kinds of uh, interest due interest due because of late payment all right all right late payments of tax liability so let's say you borrow money from bank right and you have to pay 10 percent tax and which is one thousand dollars but due to late payments is become i don't know let's say this one is the late payments it's late payment right it's become 
1,250. So only this 1,000 will be deductible. All right. And this late payments will be treated as a non deductible. All right. So that's the ideas behind this one. Right. So these are the list of uh, expenses that will be treated as a uh, non deductible. All right. But may be treated as a normal cost of business when we calculate tax from company point of view, but from government or tax point of view, that will be not treated as a business expense or in, 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 a, in a business expense in the normal routine of business. Right. So that's all about uh, deductible expense, so which means be finished. Now we move on to to C. It's a uh, other income. Other income. So we have a list of some other kinds of income that we have to add, right? Or other income, you can also call it um, non exempt income. All right, so this kind of other income we have to add in our turnover. The first one is uh, income from capital assignments. Income from capital assignments is mainly about the ownership things. Second one is income from real property transfer real property transfer so we like we saw some kinds of assets and we have a profit that's have to be taxed that will not be treated as a non-exempt oh, sorry it will not be treated as yes non-exempt um so income from income from ownership or right of use assets ownership or rights to use assets so it's, it's mainly about the, the copyright things. So if you generated any income in relation of uh, um, ownerships, right to use assets, that will be treated as your other income and we have to pay tax on it. Next one is a uh, income from exchange rate difference. Exchange rate difference. All right. So let's say you are selling product outside, outside a foreign country, and you decided a ten dollars. Right. And per product, but exchange rate increase. I mean, or make them down, uh, get weak, or foreign currencies get stronger. Then we're going to have a additional profit. The profit more than we expected right then uh you we have to pay additional tax and of course these rates exchange rates as per the commercial banks commercial banks of uh vietnam so as per commercial banks rates uh, we will estimate the profit and we have to pay tax so in other words you can say that these kinds of incomes are a non-exempt income this cannot be exempt from the tax. 
sometimes we call it non-operating income. So remember, there are two types of income, operating income and non-operating income. Remember, uh, we calculate here sales, then minus cost and profit, right? In these sales, we have an operating income and non-operating income, right? All non-operating incomes are non-exempt income, but all operating income, some exempt, some non-exempt, right? But so there are two types of income. So what's the difference between operating and non-operating income? Operating income is any kinds of income that belongs to product and services, right? Non-operating do not belong to product and services, like as receive a rent, receive interest, receive a dividend. That's kind of income. Next is a uh, income on from foreign production from production abroad. All right, so that will not be treated as your exam income. We have to pay tax on it and some kinds of others. Others, uh, other incomes involve interest, interest income, right? Any kinds of gift, donations, you receive any kinds of gifts, donations. We sell any kinds of waste material. We call it scrap, scrap value. Normally scrap value deduct from expense, right? But according to the Vietnamese accounting standards, maybe treatment is different and tax part of you, we have to pay tax on the waste material scrap, right? Next one is uh, any revaluation assets. Revaluation assets. Revaluation assets means we calculate the value of assets and which is increased, that's income, right? That will be treated as uh, other income, uh, non-exempt income, right? Any kinds of bad debts recovered. Bad debts recovered. We were treating as a bad debts, but later on we uh, we came to know that uh, bad debts return money back to us. We already declared as a bad debts, right? But you re recover money from them, so it will not be treated as your as your uh, exam income. We have to pay tax, all right? So these are the income on which we have to pay tax. So we also call it non-exam income or non exempt income right non exempt income so c is finished now we move on to d right. so d is exempt income Exam income. Any kinds of income that's from agriculture all right that's from agriculture that's from aquaculture all right that's from aquaculture right so mainly about fisheries industries and so on right? 
and salt production. If your business is involved in such kinds of income, it's exempt from the tax. Um, any kinds of income generate from providing providing technology to agriculture industries agricultures industries any kinds of companies or IT company they involve in providing services to the agriculture industries so whatever income they are generating you don't have to pay tax next any income from scientific research if you are generating any kinds of income from scientific research no tax okay next one is a income in a business in which 30% or above people are 30% or above employees are disabled or HIV positive right? HIV positive so if any kinds of business the people are 30 30 percent or above employees are, are disabled or, or employees are um, uh, are uh, suffer from hiv positive they don't have to that business don't have to pay tax next one is uh any kinds of business you generate income from um training training ethnics disabled or poor children any kinds of business making money by providing training to the these these categories of uh, of people, then we don't have to pay tax. Any, if you receive aids, receive any kinds of aids. For. Uh, for education research or social activities social economic activities so if you receive any kinds of income for the education purpose uh, research purpose, social activities purpose, on that income, you don't have to pay tax. Next is a income from transferring technology. Income from transferring uh, technologies, uh, exam income. All right? So these incomes treated as exam. Now move on to E. Teacher, can you pay the pre pay?
Yeah, any question? Yes, I am done. Yeah. Thank you. Any question? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, why, why does the government have to apply in in other ways of calculation? Why they can apply uh, the same ways of calculation, tax calculation, as the company? Because I believe that it is easier to uh, have uh, two diff two different results when you uh, have different calculations. Okay. Okay. Explaining why that we have. The, the reason behind is, for example, so let me write down here, company point of view and government point of view, why they are not same, why they have a different way of estimating tax. Company point of view, idea is sales minus cost is profit. The idea is if my cost increase, my profit decrease, my profit decrease, my tax payments will decrease. All right. So which means if we don't follow governments, if we don't follow this way, any company, they can maximize their non-operating expense or non-deductible expense to minimize its tax liability because this is expense and government point of view it's a deductible and non-deductible right it's a total so what company will do company will maximize its non-deductible expense non-business purpose late payments fines penalties uh, some other expense that we discussed earlier, right? So if this one, which means government will collect less tax. So government follow its own way of estimating tax, all right? Now the question is why company does not follow government way of estimating its tax? The reason behind it, it's a dividend. All right. If company will follow government way, the dividend, so the, the, the tax payments of the company will increase as a result, company may have less money to distribute dividend to shareholders. And that will demotivate shareholders. As a result, they will leave your company all right so they have their own administration system or proper system and of course this way if we follow government way that is more complicated more detailed but company they don't have only tax estimation. They have some other things to do, not just focus 100% on the tax estimation. And government has a more detailed information, more, more appropriate or right way to find out the, the, the exact, exact tax liability that company they have instead of company estimating their own tax liabilities. All right, so that's the reason company do not follow that government is recommended government don't follow the company they find their own way to estimating the tax right so whatever the idea is that whatever is the tax they have to pay right but it's less likely to be equal the tax calculated by a company and the tax calculated by a government of course because government has a non exempt income right and and uh, and and company company and another way that government they define their own way is to motivate motivate some kinds of industry some kind of industry and the sectors like like as i would say that uh, agriculture's you you know that government is giving lots of benefits to the business who are associated with the agriculture's 
so they want to because Vietnam is a uh, uh, their uh, primary income is agriculture income all right this could be rice it could be coffees or some other kinds of uh, things so government motivate those kind of particular sectors that belongs to the uh, to the particular industry so they categorize systematically but if they follow the company system they're gonna be a same or equal for all kinds of companies all right so that's the ideas all right that's why we have a different way of estimating company they have their different way this is called accounting this is called accounting all right this is called taxation all right the main purpose of taxation is to focus on the taxations and main focus on accounting is about the profit so they have different objectives all right so that's why they have a different estimations or different way of identifying or, or, or estimating the tax all right yes thank you Okay, so D is finished. Uh, now move on to E, which is loss carry forward. Losses carry forward. Now, what does it mean, losses carry forward? losses carry forward means any kinds of loss from the previous year year we can carry forward i think as far as i know we can carry forward loss up to five years so which means one two three four five this year has loss let's say two dollars this year lost one dollar plus last year carry forward to this year two so it's become three dollars so third year we have let's say four dollar loss plus three carry forward right it's become seven so if we can carry forward up to five years we can't carry forward more than that but i don't think so i i don't know any company they carry forward their losses from for more than five years because if the companies keep carry forwarding come they, they lost company will bankrupt because it's any kind of company they are consequently five years continuously they having a loss the company will bankrupt right but the idea is that let's say seven this four years i have profit so let's say my profit is ten dollars right and seven dollar is the loss so loss Lost seven dollars, so minus seven dollars. So I will pay tax on three dollars. That's the meaning of carry forward. We will keep offsetting, right? Or this seven years. Sorry, this is seven dollar, and seven dollar carry forward. So zero income, so zero tax. That's the meaning of loss carry forward. All right, so we can uh, carry forward. Mm -hmm. So it's always offset from the current. So after recall, uh, after uh, losses carry forward, now we move on to the um, F, which is tax rates. tax rates um, so at present the current tax rates for CIT is 20% all right it used to be um, 22% before I think it's uh, since 2014 January 14 they have changed from 22% to 20% all right okay 
So now we have some other preferential tax rates from some kind of specific industries, right? Not just 20% for all kinds of industry. So some kinds of preferential tax rate. We call it preferential tax rate. So we have preferential tax rate from specific uh, rates for specific kinds of business, like as 10% uh, rates for um, any kinds of business, which the, the period to start business is less than 15 years. Fifteen years. Right. So, but of course, it's not all kinds of business. So, some business that that's related to agriculture, right, or uh, technology related, right? Agriculture and the technology related business, which life is less than fifteen years. I mean, uh, starting period is uh, less than fifteen years. Then. 10%. Next is a 17%. 17% tax rates for new investments or new establishments, new business. New businesses. And that's new businesses related to Agriculture product related to agriculture product, um, geography, geography, geographic, and uh, yeah, and geographic projects or any kinds of energy related business. So 17%. Next is a 15%. Rates apply to the business which involves in cultivations and husbandry. or aquaculture. Aquaculture. So husbandry is mainly about um, animals uh, related business. But, so this is the tax rates uh, for uh, different kinds of business, but normally in the most cases, it's 20% applicable, right? So these are the tax rates. So now we move on to the the last point, which is uh, Z, which is a creditable. Yeah, credit, credibility. course we have to subtract this one so the main idea is uh, any kinds of uh, company they are paying Vietnamese company let's say uh, they are paying tax in foreign country all right and if they bring that income back to Vietnam all right if they bring that income back to uh, Vietnam, of course, uh, they, they really don't have to pay tax on it. All right, 
they don't have to pay uh, tax uh, on it right or uh, this is called double tax agreements this is called uh, DTA comes under uh, DTA means which means uh, it's kind of avoidance of paying two-time uh, taxation tax right uh, or if you generate any kind of foreign income and it's part of your turnover then whatever tax you have paid it it will be subtract here credibilities of foreign tax payers so, but so nowadays uh, most of countries they have a DTA agreement so in order to avoid the double taxation uh, system right so that's that's all about your credibility of foreign tax so after subtracting credibility of foreign pay tax whatever amounts we got it after subtracting this one whatever amounts we got it that amount is a tax payable yeah? so we have to pay uh, this tax to the uh, to the government right by submitting a, uh, by submit a tax return the tax via via uh, tax file or tax submission so via uh, tax file or don't say so tax submission tax submission so it means this tax we have to submit to the uh, government, right? So now we have some other guidelines in relation of tax submission. Some guidelines involve, so make sure every company, they estimate their taxes quarterly. All right, they, they estimate their tax every quarter and at the end of the year, they combine all the quarter and that's the tax liabilities they have to pay because of course they have to do quarterly why quarterly because company they report their profit quarterly right three months three months three months so if company report their profit quarterly they're gonna estimate their tax also quarterly right so that's the tax which is which is quarterly that's the idea behind this is accounting system and same thing uh, applicable to the tax next is the penalty right penalty so if you do not pay tax on time late submission then penalty is 0 0.3 percent per day All right so whatever is your tax liability at 0.3% on that amount equals to the penalties. Yeah. Uh, next one is a date of pay. Date of pay. What is a submission deadline? It's a 90th day of following year. So it's like three months. If you have a time to submit a tax file, uh, three months, all right? So to, to make sure you, you make a payments for the tax. If you don't pay, then 0.3% uh, tax will uh, applicate it, all right? Okay, so that's, that's all about uh, tax uh, submission or the tax uh, payable and uh, I think that's that's all yes that's all for your topic six right so your topic six is uh, finish I, I guess it was the last topic for your taxation uh, course right so anybody has uh, any question if you have any questions, so you feel free to ask me a question now.
Any question? Say something, anybody has any question? Yes or no? Yes or no? I guess, uh, I think we're thinking. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Regarding the preferential tax rate, um, we have to uh, rate like 10% for the less than 15 years agriculture related uh, companies. And we also have the 17% for newly ex established uh, agriculture related companies. So if um, that company is just really uh, established and of course the, um, uh, the number of years has been is on the market is less than 15 years so which tax rate will be applied for that kind of company if any agriculture related company is less it's newly established and of course the years that is that uh, it is on the market is less than 50 years so which type which tax rate is applied for that company? Um, I think it, it will apply 17%. So newly established uh, company period will be uh, less than 10 years. All right, so let me, let me check again, let me confirm again. Okay. Uh, newly established companies tax rate for newly established company is a 17 percent and the time period is 10 years all right time period is 10 years i think the 10 years so your question is any company is less than 15 years but it's less than 15 years but it's agriculture right that's your question 
as if a uh, agriculture related company had mm -hmm. just newly established and because it's newly established so the time is on the market is less than 15 years yes. so in this case which tax rate 10 percent or 17 percent is applied to that company yes yeah, 17 percent oh okay yeah 17 percent uh another another defining of a newly established is a uh, uh less than 10 years that will becomes under categories of newly established but i think in yeah in your question it will be uh, newly established so 17 percent tax rate will be considered to estimate cit okay thank you yeah. so any other question So any student has any question, yes or no? Say something, yes or no? If no question, then we can stop here. Um, uh, I, I'm sorry, Sumit, uh, yes. uh, this is Sam. Yes. Uh, the, the answer for the question uh, just uh, uh, be asked is, uh, is what, 17% of 15%? 17%. Because 17 Yes, 15% for uh, cultivation, income from cultivations, husbandry, aquaculture, yeah, but, 15%. Yeah. No, you know, uh, actually, according to my, uh, to, to my knowledge, I know that uh, mm -hmm. uh, if the company uh, operating in uh, cultivation or agriculture sector, mm -hmm. then we have a 15% uh, of tax rate in the whole uh, uh, you know, business life for uh, any time that they're operating. Yeah, not just Un unlimited, timely, timely, yeah. unlimited, timely, unlimited. Yep. Yeah. So that that means that uh, that company uh, uh, we will have fifteen percent of tax rate for any years. Yeah, that's right. For whole life. Yeah, for the whole life. Yeah, so, yeah. so the tax rate applied for that company will be fifteen percent, no yeah. matter what they are new establishment or not. Yeah, that's right. For uh, fifteen percent and seventeen percent, also. But yeah, of course. But seventeen percent have a two categories. One is the agriculture, energy, geograph geography, product, project, and second one is a micro uh, business. So, for micro business. 17% for whole life. Yes, mm -hmm. but yeah, but but I just want to keep it simple. That's why I didn't mention about the micro business in 17%. But but micro business 17% will be unlimited. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you are right. So for 15%, it will be timely unlimited for any time. So it never be considered as the old or any other rates. Yeah, okay. So uh, uh, the answer for the question of uh, Trung is uh, 15%, okay? Yes, yes, 15%. That's right. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. So any other question? So no question, then uh, can we stop here? Um, yes. Yeah. And uh, next week, uh, I guess, uh, university gonna open next week, if I'm not wrong, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. But, but until now, I haven't received any email from university whether classes will resume next week or not. But I'm waiting for uh, university official email to, to inform to all teachers or lecturers that that university will open next week. So uh, I hope I will get some email confirmations that yes, university open. But until now, there's no any official announcement I, I received, but I'm, I'm hoping that I will receive something from, from the department. So if university open uh, next week, then I'll see you next week, Wednesday afternoon, right? Right, Wednesday afternoon, right? Yes or no? Yes. Well, uh, uh, you know, actually, um, I will ask uh, the uh, department to uh, send you an official email about uh, the time uh, that uh, we uh, resume to uh, continue the offline study. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. And, and another thing is that, okay, anyway, I, I will talk to you after I finish this session, then I will, uh, I will, I will speak to you something. So students, if you have any question, then ask me, otherwise we stop. So I'll see you next week. Okay, see you next week. See you next week. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you.